Hi, Jeff Lawton here, and I'm at the Green in the Desert site, and behind me is Abla's place, something quite special. Two years of permaculture application in this dry, arid landscape by a student of ours who's just taken the system and she's applied it and made it part of her life. So we get a good view from up here on the roof. Let's go and have a look from her view, her roof looking down. So here I am up on the roof of Abla's house. And you can see that this landscape's quite contrast to the surrounding landscape. You can see what Abla started with and what she has now is quite dramatically different. Across the road, of course, is our site, the Green in the Desert site, which is 10 years old. And this beautiful little garden that's springing into life is only two years old. Let me take you for a walk through the garden and give you my view of it. And then we'll get on to the superstar herself, Abla, and she can explain what she thinks about it. Let's go. Now straight away when I turn around on the roof, I can see rampant perennial sweet potato vine, which is a great shade cover here, coming up, springing out of the nursery below. So let's just have a look down. Her nursery is quite amazing. This little shaded site down there is on the north side of the house and she's shading it with natural vine cover. And the vines are gonna cover the whole roof and create incredible insulation in the end. It's coming up over our water tanks and this is our drinking water here, which of course gets delivered in this particular climate and landscape. But also she's got a rainwater tank. Down there is a rainwater tank that runs off a roof runoff. Of course, it only runs in winter, but she saves quite a few tanks full of water, which helps her irrigation of the garden. Even in the winter, there has to be some drip irrigation. Let's have a quick look at this beautiful little nursery, which is the real incubator of the project. You can see it's nicely shaded, and she's got recycled timber, which is mostly brick pallets, has shelving, her principle is, if you've got it for free, use it. And most of her plants now come from her own cuttings, her own seed, seeds she's been given, cuttings she's been given, and she's bought one or two plants, but really a lot of it is actually her own material now. And the shade is growing itself over the top, which will really air condition the house and cut down on her energy requirement. So going back, to our gabion walled back garden. She has gabion baskets. She's filled all the rocks herself as mostly her boundary. Here's our back garden. It's full of ground cover herbs. She's got a guava there. She's got lots and lots of leucina. She's recently done a chop and drop. So these were the first ones she chop and dropped a few weeks ago and they've already grown back. There's another guava. Here's lots of basil. She's now got a back gate because they've actually put a, a little dirt road in behind. So that wasn't here before, but she has a back gate, a little bit of storage, stone walls. And here's a little veranda that looks out towards the Palestinian West Bank, which of course is the homeland of the Palestinian people. So she loves sitting here in the partial shade, looking out towards her heritage landscape. So here we go, we've got more and more vines. Now we've got olive trees. We've got Moringa, more basil, We've got a Watsonia palm. Here's your classic pollarded, chop and dropped Leukina. And she started at the back. And by the time she said when she got to the front, the back had already regrown. There's a beautiful Ponciana, it'd be a gorgeous feature in the future. More vines, I can see sunflowers. I can see a gardenia. And there's little swale vegetable gardens. These little swale vegetable gardens give her all the vegetables she needs and all the herbs, and they go right the way through the garden. Moringa are popping up everywhere. Here's a false olive, Barkinsonia. What an incredibly hardy tree that little guy is. Not a legume, but a great performer of mulch production. Now here you have more guavas, really rich little garden here, even arrowroot. And there is a mango. How cheeky is that? Apparently she's got three. So this is pretty lush. She's got an evaporative unglazed pot there. So she's got cool water in the garden, giving off cool air from the evaporating water coming through the unglazed terracotta. That's a very traditional way to keep water cool. There's a cassia legume. There's a chili plant there. There's bougainvillea. 
There's all kinds of things here. It's really happening. She's got this little patio where she can also sit in the shade. And here's her first micro swale, more moringa. And we've got an Albizia lebec right in front of me. That'll be a large long-term legume in the end. Of course, we've got these high shade. She really listens to the lesson here. We've got the high shade plants, high shade vines going up and around everything. There'll really be extra shade here in the end. Here's a fig and it's fruiting. We've got a few figs coming on. So I think she counts every one and agave. She's got little sun jewels in pots, more bougainvillea, moringa, and a recently coppiced leukina. And on it goes, micro swale after micro swale down the hill, trapping water, soaking water, adding mulch. Nearly all the mulch comes from the property now. So we've got more and more fruit trees. There's uh, Tacoma Stands over there, which is a great mulch producer. There's another Ponciana and another Albizia Lebec. And there's a neem tree right in front of me. There's actually lots of citrus. And I can see another gardenia. So we've formed little terraces around rocks that have been too big to move. There's a, another citrus there. There's a mango in here looking quite good. Look at that, it's got growth tips on it. I think that's quite cheeky. Anyway, there we go. A beautiful Albizia Lebec going up here. More citrus, another neem and in more micro terraces. And on we go, we're getting close to the Lady Stand Hill now. We've got citrus again. It's just going off. Look, here's a casuarina, another nitrogen fixer and phosphate accumulator from fungi. Here's a, a kumquat, a date palm. Oh, I missed the big date palm, of course. Dominating over the system is one of the large date palms. We've been able to help her source. So she put that in at quite a large size. It's gonna help the system take off. Olives again, we've got new chickens. We've even got an Astro Turf chicken house. Never seen one of these, but it's probably better insulated than most with that nice thick cover. A little back hatch here for getting eggs and a uh, deep mulch chicken pen. Uh, we've got a nursery that's being covered by perennial sweet potato, but there's also passion fruit starting to climb over the whole thing. Be a passion fruit shaded nursery in the end. We've got lots and lots of storage of mulches and manures, but also more citrus next to the worm farms. We've got two worm farms and they're firing along. They've both got juice. So we've got worm juice fertilizer, worm castings. There's compost storage. In fact, there's compost storage everywhere. There's all kinds of compost. Yeah. And there's paper mulches and everything you could imagine has been recycled and added. As soil creation, there's pomegranates, of course, more olives, and on we go through the system. It's just a little bit of total magic here in the Middle East. And outside, if I look outside the vine covered fence, there's lots and lots of recycled brick pallets, which are all being used for little timber creations. Waste not, want not, that's for sure. She's definitely got an energy efficient system here. Moringa flowering almost at the front gate, and here. You've got sugar cane. How about that? What a system. Let's have a look at what Abla's doing here. She's in the chicken pen right now. Let's catch up with her and see what she's got to say about this amazing system. Salam alaikum. Salam wa rahmatullah. Ahlan jif. Hala hala. Now, I've just walked around your garden uh -huh. and you've let me do it. And yeah. I've explained a few things, but you give us a tour. Tell us what you've got here. The uh, site is small, but I have uh, Big numbers from citrus, dates, nitrogen fixers, a lot of amazing things. So um, I don't know what to, to say, but everything I wanna, I bring it. I start some of it from seeds, some of it cutting, and as you see. Um, How old's the garden it's, now? We are going to be in the third year, so it's two years, six to seven months. You just done a big chop and drop. Yeah, it was like a crime. Chop and drop, a lot of it. I need the mulch. And you know, this is the season. Coming to the cooler time. Yeah, and I uh, left it like stick. After three, four days, I start from that point and you notice that they are coming even so, better. So they start coming. When was the last time you had rain? Last year. Last year, so yeah. six months, eight months? It's a year for me. 
Nearly a year. Yeah. And it's about to rain again, you yeah. think? Yeah. yeah. And I was digging that day there, and when I reach about 60 centimeters, 50 centimeters with chava meter, I find the moisture in my compost deep inside. You can distinguish between two colors, the dark one with the moisture and the light one. So there is some of the rain in the compost and in the ground. When was that? Before uh, a month I was digging there, I wanted to take things out to plant a tree. So uh, while I digging, I start uh, observing that two colors. So I find the moisture from the last training last year. How much work do you have to do now? My routine, the daily routine is from uh, sometimes half an hour, one hour. If I, I have a compost to flip every two days, it will be uh, one hour. But if I don't have to flip my compost, it's 30 minutes will be okay. Every day? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. And, you, and you're getting some vegetables, some herbs? Yeah, everything. I have vegetables, I have herbs, I have uh, trees for my food. Function, supporter one. Yeah, I think you... And you have eggs? I have chicken, <laughs> I have eggs, I have a lot of nice things. I have compost, I'm fermi compost, I have worms. So even I start storing things. I have a small fridge deep inside the freezer. I have dates, I have a lot of nice things. When I want them, I use them in my kitchen. And you're getting more production all the time? Yeah even in mulch. At the beginning, I was trying to find mulch outside, but now I have my mulch, I have my nitrogen and carbon from the place itself. So we're going to film it in about five weeks time before we leave, and it should have regrown from the top and drop by then. Yeah, and you can compare, you will see that. And so what advice do you have to people who want to do this? Uh, yeah, they can do it, it's easy, we need it. If you don't need it for yourself, do it for your children. If you don't uh, want to do it now, when is the time when we are going to start doing things for us? It's for us, not for uh, others. And, and you've done all of this yourself? Yeah, alone. What alone. about the rock walls? The uh, terrace and the gabion? Yeah. I fill it every single stone. I carry it and put it there. And you're, you're a retired school teacher? Yeah, I escaped from schools because I enjoy doing this. I find it amazing. This is better education yeah, and for the children, you think? Yeah, still educated people and still teaching people how to make compost, how to do a lot of amazing things. This is what I need and this is what they need. But with passion, with uh, deep inside, you want to do this. I'm happy to do it. And it's easy. It's very easy. With the minimum things. Just do it. Just do it as soon as possible. We need it for us on this planet. We need it. Do it. Just do it. Start. 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 Mm -hmm.